The medieval era stands out as a vivid chapter in the chronicles of time, characterized by towering castles, chivalrous knights, and minstrels singing tales of valor and intrigue. This period, marked by the rise and fall of many territories, also held deep within its folds legends that both illuminated and confounded historians. Each domain, be it a grand kingdom or a modest manor, harbored tales. Some echoed in grand courts, while others were lost to the whispers of time. Among these tales emerges the enigma of Rheinmug. Old manuscripts make mention of this kingdom, speaking of its former glory. Yet, as centuries progressed, its very existence began to blur, resembling a mirage that flickers in and out of view. Was its disappearance a mere consequence of time, overshadowed by larger empires, or is there a deeper, more intricate mystery waiting to be unraveled? Our journey seeks to uncover the fragments of this lost kingdom and breathe life into its forgotten history. Medieval Europe, spanning from the fall of the Western Roman Empire in the 5th century to the dawn of the Renaissance in the late 15th century, was a dynamic and ever-evolving landscape. This epoch was marked by invasions, migrations, and the rise of powerful entities, turning Europe into a mosaic of kingdoms, duchies, and fiefdoms, each vying for dominance and influence. While the image of valiant knights, Gothic cathedrals, and grand castles often paints our perception of this age, the reality was far more intricate, with shifting allegiances and continuous geopolitical changes. The political landscape of medieval Europe was like the ever-changing rivers of the continent, meandering and forging new paths. Kingdoms were not static. They expanded, contracted, split, and sometimes vanished entirely, often driven by wars, marriages, treaties, or inheritances. A king might begin his reign with vast territories, only to see them divided among his heirs or lost to rivals by its end. Dynastic struggles, external threats from Viking raids to Mongol invasions, internal revolts, and the interplay of church and state further fueled these changes. It was a time when political boundaries were often as transitory as the rulers who governed them. The intricate dance of power ensured that the maps of Europe were in a state of near-constant flux, making medieval Europe a captivating study in change and adaptation. The saga of Rheinvuk begins not on the battlefield or in the court of a mighty monarch, but rather in the quiet recesses of a dusty library. Among the countless parchments, bound volumes, and ancient scrolls, a collection of manuscripts came to light in the 17th century, shedding the first beam of knowledge on an almost forgotten kingdom. Sir John Cotton, a renowned collector of antiquities, generously donated his vast library to the public. Among his treasures was a document that would set scholars on a quest for understanding, the enigmatic mention of Rheinwald. This particular manuscript, uniquely labeled Cotton Domitian A1, was an amalgamation of different documents, but one segment drew particular attention. Referred to by historians as the Annalise Cambria, it chronicled events spanning various regions, but predominantly centered around medieval Wales. Within its lines, a curious entry stood out. AD 795, King Offa lays waste to Rheinbog. This singular mention ignited curiosity. The name Rheinva was unfamiliar, an anomaly in the annals of known history. The significance of this entry was profound. In an era where kingdoms and regions were meticulously documented, the appearance of an unknown entity like Rheinba was akin to finding an uncharted island on a well-mapped ocean. Questions abounded. Where was this kingdom situated? What was its legacy? Why was its mention so rare? And why did it seem to disappear from subsequent historical records? As scholars delved deeper, it became clear that Rain VG was not just a fleeting mention, but a puzzle waiting to be solved, a piece of history that had slipped through the cracks, urging to be rediscovered and rightfully placed on the map of medieval Europe. The Annales Cambria presents a treasure trove of early medieval Welsh history. Nestled within its meticulous accounts, the entry from AD 795 unmistakably states, King Offa lays waste to Rhein Vogue. This singular line speaks volumes. King Offa, the renowned ruler of Mercia from AD 757 to 796, was not just a figurehead. He was a force to be reckoned with. His ambition was evident in his expansive territorial conquests and his enduring legacy, Offa's Dyke. This vast defensive earthwork, separating Wales from Mercia, showcases his profound influence. 
Yet the mention of his campaign against Rheinweg remains intriguingly sparse. What was Rheinbog's significance? Was it a thorn in Offa's side or a jewel he sought to possess? Venturing further into the annals, Rheinbog's existence isn't just isolated to Offa's campaign. Other manuscripts from the period, namely the life of St. Padarn and the life of St. Cadog, shine more light on this enigmatic realm. Both, primarily focusing on the lives and deeds of Welsh saints, inadvertently provide clues to the geopolitical landscape of the time. The life of St. Padarn describes a division of lands in South Wales, including Seisilig, Morganog, and Rina. The WJ suffix, prevalent in Welsh nomenclature, suggests a land associated with an individual possibly named Rain. This gives credence to the notion that Rheinview wasn't just a territory, it bore a personal significance, hinting at a deeper lineage in history. However, it's the life of St. Cadog that delivers another crucial piece of the puzzle. Here, Maradud is cited as the King of Rheinvigi. This isn't just a passing reference, it firmly establishes Rheinvigi as a political entity, complete with its own line of rulers. Maradud's reign and the subsequent dynamics of his kingdom remain largely unexplored, yet his mere mention offers tantalizing possibilities. Was he a contemporary of Offa? Was he a staunch ally or a formidable foe? Furthermore, while Rheinvog's exact geographical boundaries remain elusive, its cultural and political significance is undeniable. For it to be chronicled alongside other prominent Welsh regions suggests its stature in the medieval socio-political landscape. Each mention, whether in the annals or saintly biographies, adds a layer to the mystery, encouraging scholars and history enthusiasts to piece together this jigsaw of the peasant you have heard about the kings of Rheinwig. But who are they? At the heart of Rheinwig's tales are its rulers, Foremost among these monarchs is the Maradud. His mention as the king of Reinig in the life of St. Cadog not only solidifies Reinwig's stature as a significant political entity, but also adds depth to the prevailing mystery. Maradud's reign, the alliances he formed, the battles he fought, and the policies he championed all offer a tantalizing window into Reinwig's golden age. Was he a benevolent leader, revered by his subjects, or a strategic tactician always a step ahead of his adversaries. However, the realm of reign wasn't just defined by a singular monarch. The records hint at other rulers, including Sinan and Rain, each weaving their own threads into Rain's rich tapestry. Their individual exploits, the territories they conquered, and the legacies they left behind beckon historians to delve deeper. For instance, the narrative of Sinan's forays into neighboring kingdoms or Rain's diplomatic endeavors could hold keys to understanding Reinwig's relationships with adjacent realms. Dissecting these records for clues is akin to a grand detective saga. Each entry, each chronicle, serves as a breadcrumb leading to a bygone era. The inconsistencies and gaps in the records only make the task more challenging. How did the reigns of these rulers overlap, if at all? Were their tenures marked by peace and prosperity, or strife and upheaval? It's crucial to approach these records with both reverence and scrutiny. While they offer invaluable insights, they are also products of their time, possibly influenced by biases or limited by the knowledge of the chroniclers. By meticulously analyzing these documents, we edge closer to piecing together the jigsaw of Rainver, honoring the rulers who once graced its halls, and understanding the indelible marks they left on the annals of history. Historical narratives, as much as they enlighten us about the past, also weave in elements of speculation, especially when sources are fragmentary or enigmatic. Reinwig's narrative is no exception, with historians throughout the ages putting forth their theories, each colored by their understanding, biases, and the information available to them. Several scholars have turned their attention to the mystery of Rheing, creating a vibrant dialogue within the academic community. Some references, like the life of St. Cadog, straightforwardly associate kings with reign, thus acknowledging its existence and political significance. But the nuances of its location, expanse, and influence remain topics of fervent debate. A dominant theory building on the Annales Cambria posits Ryan G's location in South Wales, particularly given the WG suffixes prevalence in Welsh place names. However, dissenters argue that linguistic patterns alone cannot definitively pinpoint a kingdom's geographical bounds. 
Another theory inspired by Offa's campaign mentioned in the same annals suggests Rhinebe might have been closer to Mercia's border, a strategically significant territory worth Offa's attention. The kingdom's significance itself is a matter of speculation. Some historians view Rhinebeidjit as a powerful entity with considerable influence in regional politics, while others believe it might have been a smaller, albeit crucial, player in the larger medieval political landscape. More contemporary historians, equipped with newer research methodologies and a plethora of secondary sources, often find themselves revisiting earlier claims. For instance, the notion of Rangi being a composite of territories from Daifed and Burkinyog, as put forth by certain modern scholars, adds yet another layer to the discourse. Differing theories on Rangi highlight the intricate dance of history and interpretation. While concrete answers may remain elusive, the very act of speculating, of seeking truths in fragments and shadows, underscores the enduring allure of lost kingdoms and the enigmas they present. As we wrap up our journey into the story of Reinvug, it's clear that history is full of mysteries waiting to be uncovered. 